Cage Mines. We got B Win with us. Hi. Thank you for the time. How you Thank doing? Thank you. I'm good. MMA, and you're here at Jackson's Winks, but that it's not where you started. No. So let's hear some of your story. Where were you born and raised? Uh, I was born in Vietnam. Um, I came over to California, and then, but I mostly lived in Houston. That's where I really call home. I'm from a little tough gym in Houston called Four Ounce. Um, I came. I've always everybody's known about Jackson's, but I came because uh, Cub became my friend and and, uh, and coach. Uh, he coaches me a lot and my mentor really. So. Um, he brought me over here, and uh, I love Jackson ever since, so, yeah. And then how much time did you spend growing up in Houston? Um, I've spent 11 years in Houston, most of my adult life. And that's a good way of why you got into Legacy Promotions, where we saw you yeah, make your yeah, pro yeah. debut? Yeah, Legacy is based out of Houston, and I, uh, I started my amateur with them, and uh, I was their amateur champ, and I did my pro debut with them, so, yeah. So you've been doing martial arts for a long time? No, actually, it kind of shocks people. I, I've been training, I first walked into the gym four years ago, and I've only been fighting for three years, but when I started, I was just crazy. I told my coach I want to fight every month. So I did 16 sanctioned amateur fights in three years, plus a bunch of smokers. So uh, yeah, it's literally every month. Okay, so before four years ago, did you have an athletic background? No, I wrestled in high school a little bit, but I was like a really a troubled teen. Um, so I went to juvie and I, I had to obviously stop wrestling. Um, and then, so yeah, I just had a, a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble. So basically, before fighting, I was just working really hard and just making dudes meet, you know? So wrestling was the first thing you got into. Yeah. So it's always been kind of the physical sports that have drawn to you? Yeah, the toughest sports. I'm not a team player. <laughs> and and when I say that, I mean, I don't mean, I mean, um, of course, in MMA, your team makes you, you know what I mean? But I like self-accountability. Uh, I tried soccer a little bit, and then um, the pressure of, of me affecting their game or when I was little, I was a hothead. So like, if somebody was really lazy, I got really mad, you know what I mean? So wrestling, it's like, it's a team sport. You couldn't practice by yourself. You couldn't get better by yourself. But when you're in your match, it's 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 just you in there. So that's why I love fighting and self accountability. The same thing with my my whole life. I just um, if I fail, I want it to be on me, and if I succeed, I want it to be on me. So yeah, that's why I like the sport. You got past the troubling times in your life, and now four years ago, what led you into the four ounce gym? Um. Like I said, I had a lot of trouble. I, I just got out of jail, actually, um, and I was just kind of lost. And I heard um, I heard that people make money off fighting. It was new, you know, and I was like, people really do this. So I walked into the gym. I was one of those misled, tough people, like, I want to fight. And quickly found out that is not how things work. Uh, you got to pay your dues, you got to work hard. So I uh, lived at the gym, I cleaned the gym uh, from Four Ounce. I, I, the owner let me live there, free free uh, admission, like, to pay. I don't have to pay the gym. I cleaned the gym, I watched the gym, sold membership. So um, that was my first year. What was it, what part did you like the most when you first got into MMA? You went from the wrestling, but what about striking and not doing it in the street? Yeah, right. Um, actually, what I thought I was going to like about it is how tough and aggressive and the violence of it. But on the contrary, I had that. What it taught me was um, discipline, you know. Um, it gave me peace. In, in I found peace in chaos, and it was just... It was great, but you know, now that I think of it, I'm actually just realizing it right now. I've always been alone my whole life, and the gym, MMA is the toughest sport I think there is, and through blood, sweat, and tears, you make family. So I kind of felt like I was somebody to somebody, someone, you know, like I was part of a family. Um, so I think I, I just figured it out right now, but that's, that's why I liked it. I belonged somewhere in MMA. And then now with that Houston family and out here, are you going back and forth to train? Yeah, I go back and forth a lot. I actually have two teammates from uh, from Houston here. Um, it was really hard to leave, but um, you know, you sacrifice a lot of for the sport. And, and at some point, you need to be like, I, if I'm going to do this and make all the sacrifices, I need to do 100%. I don't really know how to half-ass things. You know, in Houston, I was working and training, working and training. So I decided to save up my money and come out here and sacrifice everything and do it 100%. So from four years ago, how have how have your thoughts and your goals towards MMA changed? Um, 
first, I, I just make little goals. I think that keeps me a little more sane. I know people say dream big, you know, but I keep little goals. Um, when I first started MMA, um, it was to just get out of trouble, you know. Second goal was to make my amateur debut. Third goal was to be champion. Um, next goal was to be a pro, and uh, and I, I did all those. I accomplished all that. My next goal is to get into the UFC. Now, at your size, you already said you're one of the smaller atom weights out there. So how does that work with your fight style? Um, most people would think it's a disadvantage, but I've always been this small. I mean, elementary school, high school, I've gotten in so many fights. Um, I'm used to it and I know I, I've learned how to um, capitalize on it. I think it's better. I'm short. I might not ha have, you know, the head punch knockouts, but I've had body punch knockouts. Um, it's harder to take me down because I'm little. Um, so I mean, I, you just you just work with what you have, you know, and you make the best of it. And I think I've been doing great with it. So you've been doing great with it. We saw that, and also you started off your career right away with Legacy. Legacy putting you on the main card, Access TV. What did that do for you, being able to get exposure, get your name out there right away? It. It, it was actually just a personal, it felt really good for me personally because I've done so much with Legacy um, that it felt like being at home, you know. Um, as far as exposure, it felt good, but I, I, uh, I liked the pressure. I think one thing that I was good at was I always understand the business side. Um, you know, I've worked all my life, so I understand how to get what you want. Um, I know that females, you know, if you're marketable, your looks or whatever, as long as you do it respectfully and you work hard and back it up, I think there's no shame in, in uh, going out there and getting exposure. I have a big social media following. And then talked about a goal, getting to that octagon, to the UFC. Right now, you're small atom weight. They only have straw weights. Is there any smaller goals, like maybe Invicta, because they do have an atom weight division? Would you want to make a stop there? Possibly? Yeah, of course. Um, of course, uh, I've talked to Invicta, and, and they have some great atom weights. And uh, it'd be fun to fight for Invicta, yeah. But you know, before there was 35ers, before there was women, Dana said never. Before there was 35ers, there wasn't a straw weight, so um, I think our weight class is coming up soon. We're very technical because we're the smallest, and uh, we're entertaining, so yeah, Invicta, I'd be honored, um, but I definitely think UFC, we're coming. And then also, with the gym you came from in Houston, is there a, a large women's team there? Um, from the gym we came in Houston, no, but the, we didn't have a lot of women, but the ones we did were great assets because, like I said, it, it was a rough little gym. It was a tough gym, you know? So the ones that stayed were tough and they, they, were, they were good athletes and we had about two or three. It was, it was good. And now, also you had an extensive striking amateur career where you got into several kickboxing smokers and also you had a fight in lion fights, right? So do you think some of that stuff, the experience that benefited you, may have made too much of a name for yourself? As I've heard for the most recent fight we were expecting to see you in, it's been a little bit of a problem getting somebody to commit. Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's hard. Yeah, I had a lot of kickboxing fights, but like I said, um, Everybody has their advantages and disadvantages. You know, I don't think um, I don't think it should be a problem to take a fight against me, and nor should me against somebody else. Because let's say there's a purple belt. You know, it's the same as me having 10 or 12 kickboxing matches. The same advantages. Uh, I hope uh, to get fights soon. I'm kind of in a limbo right now. Um, so I've heard from my coaches, and they tell me to be patient. Um, but uh, it'll come. And in the meantime, I'll just keep getting better. And um, getting prepared for the next level um, and that's all I can do. It's frustrating but I'm trying to be patient and just get better every day. I train like I have a fight every day. Yeah, how do you deal with this? Someone that said you went in and first day told your coach I want to fight as much as I can. Tell us about the smokers, the amateur run and now you're sitting here having to wait. How do you it's, use this to grow to move forward with? It's frustrating, you know, especially when you sacrifice so much to be out here and um, you know, I really, really want it. I'm really passionate. And I, I, like I said, I love staying active. It's frustrating. But as I've learned from Greg Jackson and my manager, Akami, it's a mental game too, you know? You got to learn to just be patient. The business side is frustrating, especially when you get to higher levels. And um, if this is preparing me for, for, um, 
for what's to come in my later career, then I might as well get it over with now and just work hard and be patient. So. And then also talking about one more thought on it's hard getting fights for you right now. Could that also be because you didn't exactly have the easiest in the world, you know, pro debut. I believe you beat the King of the Cage world champion yeah. your first fight. I mean, yeah. kind of stuff's going to make a little shockwaves in a yeah. small community that we have at WMMA. Yeah. I had a problem finding a debut. And so did Aunt, uh, Well, Andy had four, I think she had four or five fights um, already. She was a little bit of a veteran. She had fights. But see, I had, I had problems um, finding fights, and so we just take what we can. I'm trying to take what I can and um, as they come. And um, I kind of rise to the occasion, so challenges, I kind of welcome them. And it was great. It was high risk, high reward. And it tested me, and it, I came out with the win, so. Yeah, how did you feel about that? You got on top a couple times, you landed some good strikes, again, connecting great to the body, but you also survived finding yourself in bad positions on the ground. Yeah. How did you feel? That, what did you take away from that performance? Oh, I took away from so much, as Greg, Greg Jackson would say. Um, no more interruptions. It's funny because we watched the fight, and I did great the second, um, the first and second round. And so the third round, she had my back most of the time. And so I thought that was my bad round. Well, of course, Greg Jackson, Jackson knows much more than all, and he told me um, your third round was the best because when you were in a bad position, you stayed composed. So those are the lessons you take away, and I think that's why I really just want to fight. I don't care about getting more victories. I just want more lessons, and you can't really just get tested unless you're in that cage with somebody brand new, somebody who's trying to take your head off. Um, yeah, so I took away from that fight that I'm, I was composed and I, I'm, more, I'm a more mature fighter than I was. I gotta thank you for the time. It was great getting to talk to you. What's the message for that legion of fans? Oh man, thank you for supporting me. It's crazy. You guys have been supporting me since I've had nothing, amateur fights. And um, um, please be patient. I know I'll try to keep fighting and, and, and uh, yeah, so we'll get there. Okay, including me. Uh, and then she'll lie. She'll be like, you want to go and get some uh, banh mi? I'm like, sure. And then she's like, nope, sorry. I just wanted to see you get your hopes dashed. Right? So she's mean to everybody. She's, she beats everyone up. She's this cowboy, rural, Texas person that just comes with an attitude. Hey, but it makes you better for it, right? It does. I'm here to humble you. I'm here to toughen you up. Yeah. You know, in life, there's a lot of things that uh, get your hopes up and let you down. Why not, you know, let it come from a friend? I, friend of me. <laughs> friend of me. That's what she is. No, she's great. She's great, and we're glad to have her on our team. Best women's MMA team in the whole entire world. Jackson. Lee. And then she'll lie. She'll be like, "You want to go and get some uh, bond me?" I'm like, "Sure." And she's like, nope, sorry. I just wanted to see you get your hopes dashed, right? So she's mean to everybody. She's, she beats everyone up. She's this cowboy, rural, Texas person that just comes with an attitude. Hey, but it makes you better for it, right? It does. I'm here to humble you. I'm here to toughen you up. Yeah. You know, in life, there's a lot of things that uh, get your hopes up and let you down. Why not, you know, let it come from a friend? I Friend of me. Friend of me. That's what she is. No, she's great. She's great. And we're glad to have her on our team. Best women's MMA team in the whole entire world. Jackson Lee.